Order. From Almighty God, by whom alone kings reign and princes decree justice, and from whom alone cometh all counsel, wisdom, and understanding, we, thine unworthy servants here, gathered together in thy name, do most humbly beseech thee to send down thy heavenly wisdom from above, to direct and guide us in all our consultations, and grant that we, having thy fear always before our eyes, and laying aside all private interests, prejudices, and partial affections, Click. the result of all our counsels may be to the glory of thy blessed name, the maintenance of true religion and justice, the safety, honor, and happiness of the Queen, the public wealth, peace, and tranquility of the realm, and the uniting and knitting together of the hearts of all persons and estates within the same, in true Christian love and charity, one towards another, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Okay. Now push forward a bit harder. Go on, go on, go on. Okay? Yes, thanks. I'd better get my skates on. Mummy saw you on television last night. Mm -hmm. I was at Brownies. How's school? It's all right. There's a man coming to teach us how to play guitar. Yeah, terrific. It's only for kids with big hands. Let's have a look. You'll be all right. You've got a hand like a foot. Daddy. <laughs> Mum says she made some tea at six o'clock. I'm just finished. What have you been doing? Baking. There you go. Great, thanks. You can have jam tarts if you like. I'd love some. I wish you lived here. Dad? What? Know that gerbil at school? Yes? He's had children. Michael! Bath! Right! How many jam tarts am I allowed then? Many as you like. Say some there, won't you? Those are what Michael made. Hey, he's good, isn't he? Brought sausage rolls home from school last week. <laughs> you look thin. No, it's a light. Can we talk sometime? Hey, Michael, you're supposed to be in the bath. Look, watch out. Ooh. Something else to tell you, Wally. What's that, Stanley? I finished the mm. reading scheme. Good. Good on you, comrade. What do you think of that? I'm over the moon. You come here. Come on. Go on. All right, now go and finish the bathing scheme. Anything special? I just thought, thought it might be useful to see what shape we were in after the divorce. Yeah, I'd like that. Thanks, Lynn. You better get off. You're driving. Mm -hmm. Take care. And you?
Bye. Have you seen Mr. Brad? Thank you very much. Mr. Brand? Claire Cranston. Oh, yes. Yes, hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, 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 give me that. Have a seat. Um, coffee? No, thanks. I'm fine. Jeff Rawlinson said you might let me have a few hours a week. It's possible. Say, ten? Yeah, that should be all right. Uh, where do you work? At home? Yes. I have a seven-year-old daughter. I like to be at home when she comes back from school. You have a typewriter there? Hmm. Good. Uh, it's mainly correspondence. Got a minute, Bill? Sure. Excuse me. Two coffees, please, Al. Thank you, sir. I'm working on B. First committee, isn't it? That's right. There we are, sir. Thanks, Alfred. Good, thank you. Don't worry too much about procedure. It's not a great deal different from the chamber. We stand when addressing the chair, our usual forms of address. No smoking, reading of newspapers, eating or drinking. Well, I must say, it's a blessed relief to be on a committee that isn't going to be a parliamentary version of the third battle of the Somme. I can't remember when we last had Tory support on a second reading. It was six months ago. The, uh... Public expenditure cut. Ah, yes, of course. Well, we must count our blessings, mustn't we? You know about tabling amendments. Yeah. And not that it's encouraged, mind. We expect support here just as much as in the House. I read what you had to say on the second reading. Chief Whip took it as a speech in favour of the bill, which is why I agreed to support your request for a seating committee. Well, I'll be around anyway, should you need uh, advice. Thanks, Jeremy. Now, the member for Lily, I'll be bound. How goes it, Bill? Fine, Reg. You? Oh, not complaining. I noticed. Meaning? Doesn't matter. Mm. Thank you. I uh, hear you turned down the PPS job with last. Not interested in the scenic route, eh? He's pretty disappointed about it. He said he's hard on having him. He'll survive? No. Oh, yes. Are you on this committee? No, I'm on D for Nashville. What's the line on this one? No line, save a low profile. Question of priorities. You should come to more journal meetings, Bill. Will you vote for it on the third reading? No, probably not. Not going to make any difference with the Tory supporting. Yet you did vote for it at the second reading. <sighs> not true. I wasn't there for the second reading. I, I meant the group. Thank you, sir. Did they? Didn't you? Yes. I was that then. Isn't it obvious? Do you think they'd have given me a seat on this committee if I'd have spoken against? Nice, nice. You're getting quite good at it, aren't you? Morning, Reg. Oh, morning, John. Hi, oh, Jeremy. What you with? Our next leader. I'll leave you to it, then. I'll keep an ear out for explosions. Seems OK to me. This one doesn't seem to have an address. Wilkinson uh, Textile Action. Yes. Leave that blank. I'll need to find it. Shall I do them, then? Fine. Sign them tomorrow? I'll sign them if you like. Jeff always let me. No, I'll sign them, OK? Um. <laughs> Don't I know you from somewhere? Oh, just yes, a yes. No, I'm not being corny, really. I used to be an actress. It's probably that. Thank you, sir. What happened? Nothing. Good to meet you, Claire. Good to meet you. Hi. 
I've got the early train. Thought I'd drop in before I go. Christ, it's today. I'm sorry I'd clean forgotten. It's all right. I'd forgotten about your committee meeting. What time's it start? 10.30. It's two minutes. Well, there we are then. Hang on, hang on. Listen. I hope the interview goes well. Thanks. Do you want the job? Dunno. I wouldn't mind it in principle. I'll know better when I've met the people I'll be working with. Well, you go easy on them, eh? Of course. That's a filthy bill. I know. You don't belong here. Listen, I've got to get in. Yeah. Stay down, we'll talk. I'm on a day return. But you could drive back with me Friday. I'll call you. Well, think about it. Consultation with right honourable members opposite. I should like to move the proceedings on the further prevention of terrorism bill. The committee do meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10:30 o'clock. Be sure. Resolved. On a point of order, Mrs. Martin, this is my first appearance in this room, and it's my distinct impression that it's freezing. Yes. It's one to understand that this is yet one more government attempt to save the nation's fuel. <laughs> if it is, might I suggest that members be issued with blankets as we move into the winter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thank the honourable and gallant member for Worcester North, but the temperature in this room had not escaped my notice. In fact, there's been a partial central heating failure, which I'm assured will be rectified by the second sitting. Uh, may one ask whether that assurance came from the government or the House staff? If it was the government, then I think we should still lay in a stock of blankets in view of the unequal record of broken promises and assurances over the past <laughs> two years. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Leighty? Might I seek the guidance of the chair, madam? I'd understood we were gathered to discuss the further prevention of terrorism, oh. Bill. Uh, not the provision of blankets, Bill. Yeah. Uh, perhaps yeah. I'm in the wrong committee. <laughs> May I, I think we've said enough about blankets. Welcome to Upper Four Remove. Uh, Mr Venables. Before we begin to discuss Clause 1 and amendments, may I draw attention to the explanatory and financial memorandum that prefaces the bill. The bill before you is an attempt to build upon the undoubted success of the Temporary and Renewable Act we placed on statute two years ago as an immediate response to the terror that was being waged inside our cities. Now, when we introduced that first act, we were anxious that in pursuing law and order and the protection of the citizens of Britain, we should not make inroads into the area of democratic rights and individual freedoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, on the whole, our fears were unjustified. The vast majority of the citizens of this country continue to lead their lives untouched by the workings of the new act, which is as it should be. Law is always an assistance to good living, not the inhibition of it. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Now, as I said in the chamber on the second reading, the time has now come. Many may think it long overdue yeah. in view of the awful events of the last few weeks and months to integrate still further elements of those temporary laws into a permanent legal structure. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to say here how particularly gratified I am to have produced a bill that has won the wholehearted approval of all sections of the House. It's a closing of the ranks in times of danger to the people that I have personally sought across a broader spectrum of governmental policy than purely that of security. Yeah. I thank the Minister for giving way. May I remind the Right Honourable Member for Pembley, however, that Conservatives had a long and unbroken record of patriotism in these matters. Brother. And that the bill before us is at least as much the result of opposition and persistent pressure as of the Minister's personal initiative. All right. I shouldn't wander too far. We're looking for a division on Clause 1 by noon or so. Oh, by the way, you forgot to bow. You know, just like the Chamber, coming and going. I should have taken the train. 
yesterday. Oh. That was terrible. Yes, I'm sorry. It wasn't you. It was us. All right. You take the blame as a way of avoiding the problem. Which problem? What's a problem? We didn't make it. It happened. Okay, so it's a problem. Will you take it or what? Don't know. How long have they given you? A week. But you like the people and it's a good job. Mm-hmm. So? I'm not sure how much it's because I want the job. Qua job. How much it's because you're here. Oh. I've spent the last five years trying to rid myself of dependence on men. It's a hard habit to kill. Oh. I don't want to talk about it, actually. I'll sort it out. Do you want to talk? I wouldn't know where to begin. Doesn't matter where. Start. I have these two voices in here. Well, I say two. It's never less than two. Sometimes it's in the upper thirties. What do the two say? Oh. Might, right. Power, principle. Pragmatism, precept. Parliament, people. Quick, slow. Consensus, One day, struggle. now. I've stopped feeling real. What are you going to do about that? The logic of being in Parliament is to struggle for power. It has to be. Yet I don't. Won't. Because I can't. Partly because I suspect that struggle very deeply. A glance at the shrunken giants of the left currently behaving like elegant miniatures in the cabinet room makes a point, I think. And partly because I think the parliamentary struggle is illusory. Shimmerer. No. Mystification. Circular. Perfectly self-contained. A P, three wooden cups. Find it. The conjurer's job is to keep us guessing, and while we guess, he wins. But take his wrists in your hands while someone else lifts the cups. Eureka. The P is discovered where it is. The P is power, yes? Say more. Oh, it's messy. It won't focus. I'm sorry I haven't helped. Yeah. I wouldn't ask, would I? So I'm left doing these hundreds of little things. Some of them marginally valuable, some silly, some ugly but necessary, some hugely idiotic. I help widows get their pensions, I help the homeless get houses. I write to ministers about inner ring roads. I open bazaars, I preside at speech chains, I bow to chairs. You do other things. Listen, the Labour government kept in power by the likes of me is fulfilling, yet again, 
its historic role as the supreme agent of international capitalism in Britain and all the classic features of that process re-emerge chronic large-scale unemployment massive sustained cutback in the public sector you know education nursery schools public welfare services hospitals coupled with the steady sheltered recovery of profits in the private sector and what do we do about it what do we do about it we men of the left huh? David Last lies low, raises hell in private, but makes no waves in public, dreaming of that final push that gives him party, government and power. Red Star and the Journal Group establish priorities, take soundings. Trapped in the same metallic logic of social democracy, unable to do what is incontestably right because their definition of the left ends with a Labour government which they have to keep in power at all costs. And what do I do? God, it's pathetic. I treat Parliament, this, as an arena for the exercise of moral repugnance. Like any liberal... That's not what politics is for Christ's sake. Yes. Who? Oh, yeah. No, that's all right. Look, Jeremy, what's the status of this for? I've spoken to nobody. Now, don't do me favours, all right? You want to talk about the amendment? See me tomorrow before the committee. Yeah, fine, fine. Good night. That's a committee whip. What do you want? He wants to discuss my amendment to clause two of the further prevention of terrorism bill. Isn't it to his taste? He thinks I'm hatching something. Are you? Yes. A wooden egg. I'm sorry about the miseries. Hmm. It's your turn tomorrow night. Do you want to try again? If I have to try, I'd rather not. Okay. Hey. See you Tuesday. I don't see what you're after with this amendment. Don't you? There's a good chance it won't even be called. My own view is it's not in the spirit of the bill. Well, we'll see, shall we? You have the hope of getting it through, anyway. The Tories will vote with us, you know that. So what's the problem? Look, the Home Secretary wants you to withdraw it. I can imagine. Excuse me. Clause 2, special powers and functions. I beg to move Amendment 63. In page 4, line 15, leave out subsection 1 and insert 1. The law enforcement agencies, as described in clause 1, shall be empowered to detain without trial such persons as fall within the terms of the bill for a period not exceeding two weeks. Well, with this, we are to take the following amendments. Number 73, in page 6, line 25, leave out paragraph B and insert B, the immediate creation of a national fingerprint file. Uh, number 84, in page 4, line 15, leave out subsection 1 and insert 1. The law enforcement agencies, as described in clause 1, be empowered to detain without trial such persons as fall within the terms of the bill for a period not exceeding three days. On a point of order, Madam Chairman. Mr. Henson. The selection of amendments is properly the business of the chair, of course. But I would argue that amendment number 84, to be moved by my honourable friend, the member for Lely, is so obviously against the spirit of the bill before us, and so patently, therefore, contrary to the will of Parliament, 
who sent the bill to this committee, that a prima facie case for not calling it is clearly made. Yes, yes. On the same point of order, Madam Chairman, it is surely clear to all honourable members present that powers of detention limited to three days are tantamount to there being no powers of detention whatsoever. I would strongly urge, Madam Chair Chairman, that in the light of this you would reconsider your decision to allow Amendment 84 to be called. I am grateful to the right honourable gentlemen for raising the points they have raised. Though, as points of order, they lack a certain uh, lineage, I think. As both right honourable gentlemen agree, it is for the chair to decide on the selection of amendments and consequential amendments to be discussed. I'm very happy, however, to explain my thinking in calling amendment number 84. The principal amendment to clause 2, paragraph 1, amendment number 63, contains a crucial variation of the period during which persons might be detained without trial under the then Act. The bill asking for 10 days and the amendment calling for 14 days. In logic, any variation of the period of detention as contained in an amendment should be allowed to be put. I have consequently selected amendment number 84. As there is no indication that uh, amendment number 84's leading sponsor wishes to withdraw the amendment, it shall be taken as indicated. Thank you, Ms. Martin. I have no desire to withdraw it. Mr. Beale. Uh, very well, Madam Chairman. Would it be possible to ask for clarification as to proceeding, Madam Chairman? Mr. Henson. Could the Chair say whether division will be called on all amendments or simply on the substantive amendment as selected? The Chair will recognise that the Government is anxious to place an act on the statute book at the earliest possible moment in view of the terrible events of the past few months. It is, I believe, not only the will of Parliament but of the country as a whole to see to it as expeditiously as possible that these men of blood be brought to, to justice and that this wave of terror should be halted and peace restored to our towns and cities. It is practice, as the right honourable gentleman possibly knows, to take division on principal motions only. However, I should point out to the committee that where amendments are grouped, as in the case we've been discussing, if the sponsors wish to have separate divisions, they must make it known to me when we reach the appropriate point. <laughs> Mr. Beale. I want to stress at the outset, Madam Chairman, that there is no fundamental difference of principle between opposition and government on the measures here before us. The Temporary and Renewable Prevention of Terrorism Act of 1974 operated on a period of detention and following arrest not exceeding seven days. In seeking, in a new bill here before us, to extend that period to ten days, the government ipso facto concedes that its original surmise was inadequate. And in our view, their revised estimate of ten days is still inadequate. We have canvassed, I might add, far and wide throughout the land. We have talked to police officers, magistrates. We put to them the question, what in your view is a realistic length of time you need to prepare your case against those suspected of terrorist connections? And the answer has come back loud and clear. At the very least, a fortnight. I have here letters from leading police officers throughout the land all of them asking for that longer period our amendment suggests. But in effect, what they're saying is this. Give us the powers, give us the time, and we'll do the job. <laughs> now, it would be a particularly stubborn minister in a particularly purblind cabinet who failed to heed such calls. And I do beseech the minister in the strongest possible terms to reconsider the contents of this clause and to accept our amendment number 63. Because the consequences of his not doing so may very well be horrible beyond imagining, for which he might very well be held himself, in some measure at least, personally responsible. Mr. Hinchcliffe. Madam Chairman, I should like to support the amendment and the statement of my right honourable friend, the member for Wrighton. As member for Walsover, I have the honour to represent a constituency in which a good many Irish live and work. Good people, decent people, hard-working and God-fearing. Overwhelmingly, it is their opinion that the patriots who perpetrate these horrific outrages, these men of blood, as they're being called, 
must be hunted down and brought to justice with the full rigour of the law. But the law must be strengthened in favour of the agencies of apprehension and detection. Now, let us have no more cant about democratic rights. It is democracy we seek to preserve against these alien, anarchistic and subversive elements in our midst. Now, the government's extension of the period of detention without trial is like everything else they've enacted over the past two years. Too little and too late. I personally would have favoured an amendment giving specific powers to the police of immediate rearrest should the situation in their view warrant it. Like South Africa, you mean? You may smear by association as much as you care to, sir. The facts are that our law enforcement agencies have asked for this amendment and it would be a desperately foolish man who did not pay them heed. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Mr. Mace. Thank you, Madam Chairman. As the only Liberal on this committee, may I say that we do not support Amendment Number 63. I see nothing to be ashamed of in seeking to preserve that delicate and vital balance between the essential democratic rights of our fellow citizens and the need to provide an effective legal framework within which those rights might be enjoyed. Which is what we're trying to do. Now, that is what political maturity means. But I would not expect too many of the honourable gentlemen on this side of the aisle to be over-familiar with the concept. Yeah. How would you recognise it? Yeah. A little offensive. Liberals will oppose the amendment because it would represent, at this point in time... Action. ...an unwarrantable and indefensible inhibition of democratic rights and freedoms. Oh, yeah. Now, we have no doubt that some such act should be placed on the statute books. Vote for it. But its strength must be based in morality, for it is a moral idea the idea of freedom within the law that we seek to uphold. Mr. Venables. And Madam Chairman, there are many reasons why the government will seek to have Amendment Number 63 defeated, some of which have been already touched on in that excellent speech we've just heard from the Honourable Member for Leaming. <laughs> we too have taken soundings, but of a rather more official kind than that of the opposition. Members will remember the Conference of Chief Constables and the Army Seminar, which, as Home Secretary, I called for and presided over in the late summer. These and countless other meetings and consultations and correspondences reaching far out into the country as a whole have led us to the drafting of this bill and in particular to this clause. In our judgment, a period of detention without trial not exceeding 10 days is the correct balance to be held Too little. between not freedom not and security. As to amendment number... Would the minister give way? Yeah. I'd rather not, if you don't mind. I think you've had a generous bite of the carrot. <laughs> <laughs> On amendment 73, I shall dwell only briefly. Since nobody's actually spoken to it, and I see no sign of the honourable member who's sponsoring it. The government is opposed at this point of time to the setting up of a national fingerprint file. Yeah, yeah. Or for that matter, if I may anticipate other amendments, table but not yet called, to the creation of any... Special anti-terrorist military unit on the model of West Germany or other sovereign states. Would the minister say why? Because to us this smacks of impetuosity, bordering upon panic. The measures to be taken must be calm. They must be rational. They must be fair. And seen to be so. And they must inconvenience the law-abiding citizens of this land as little as possible. And be totally ineffective. Now, as regards <laughs> Amendment Number 84, of course we oppose. Speaking personally, I cannot believe that anybody who voted for the bill on the second reading can seriously be proposing it. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Brown. I beg to move Amendment Number 84. Um, and I give notice that I would like that amendment to move in due course to a division, Mr. Martin. Order, order, order. Noted, Mr. The Brown. Home Secretary rebukes me with the charge of inconsistency in voting, for, in voting for the bill at the second reading and in urging this amendment here. I would ask the Minister to bear two things in mind. First, the polite fiction that a member is responsible for his vote is a piece of cant that even a minister should be able to recognise unless the iron unless the iron has bitten very deep indeed like all other Labour members on this committee I was enjoined to vote for the bill at second reading by a process known as the three-line whip now I know it's not customary to talk about these things in gatherings like this but it is important that we try to separate reality from the fictions that surround it. 
in spite of which organised requisitioning of all available fodder, 15 members voted against, four of them are co-sponsors of amendment number 84. And here is the second thing I would ask the minister to note. How many of those opposing ministers, those opposing members, find themselves here on this committee today? Not a single one. But we're not interested in I cannot say that I am surprised. Order, order. I would remind the member for Lely he is moving an amendment and must confine himself to it. Thank you, Ms Martin. I simply felt that the minister had imputed something which required some answer of me, but I'll continue. <clears throat> we heard on Tuesday from the Home Secretary the way in which the Temporary and Renewable Terrorism Act has worked. We heard the statistics for last year. 800 odd arrests and detentions, over 70 deportations, something like 20 persons brought to trial, 11 found guilty of offences under the Act. Yet, yet the terror continues, spreads, worsens. Why? Because are insufficient, that's why. Because police powers are ineffective? Of course they are. The police have greater powers now under the Act than at any other time outside of war since the 18th century. The police, the police have powers to arrest a man as he leaves the factory or the building site without charge without basic rights of habeas corpus, which the Act specifically waives, to lock him up for seven days, to interrogate him, often without informing employers or workmates of his whereabouts, and then to present him before a tribunal for deportation on, on evidence that has been in no way challenged in or by a court. In my own constituency, these things have happened and will continue to happen. And in, and in your... The member for Lely will confine himself to the amendment. The problem of Ireland will not be solved by passing punitive, anti-democratic laws in Britain. The problem of Ireland will be solved by the Irish. When a British government acting on behalf of the British people relinquishes the imperialist role it has exercised there these last three centuries and accepts that the Irish must be allowed to settle their own affairs in their own way, however painful that way may seem to be. This, this present bill, uh, with this clause, will cause a proliferation of a process already well underway. Already police are using existing powers to spread the net even wider. Men and women who have lived here all their lives, who have never had any connection with Republican parties, are being taken in, some of them, to be deported to a country they left 20 or 30 years ago. Now, who are these people? Well, they're murderers. What characterises them? They are Irish and they are industrial militants, shop stewards, trades unionists, conveners, organisers, or they are political militants, members of parties, officials, or even local councils. I will not support a bill that in any way infringes on the basic rights of the working class of this country or any other to organise itself so as it may struggle more effectively. <laughs> With respect, Madam Chairman, there seems pretty common agreement among members of the committee that we are in the presence of a dilatory motion in abuse of the rules of the House. Thank you, Mr Henson. The Chair is familiar with the powers of the Chair in these matters. I am mindful of the fact that the Honourable Member for Lely is a relatively new member, possibly less familiar than many here with the rules and procedures of the House, but I must ask him once again to speak more concretely and more precisely to his motion. I am obliged, Miss Martin. I shall finish in a few sentences more. Quiet! Let him speak! Quiet! See if you can control it. Of course. If I might be permitted one tiny reference back, simply on a point of information, Miss Martin. <clears throat> I have collected evidence supporting these last allegations on 14 cases of arrest and detention in my own constituency. A dossier was sent by me to the Home Secretary two months ago. 
Despite frequent reminders, I still await a reply. Will my honourable friend give way? No, I will not. Let me say in conclusion, the politics of terror, of bombing, is a bankrupt politics. I do not oppose this bill or this clause because I support the politics of terror. But when honourable gentlemen on both sides of the aisle talk about these men of blood, well, what else are they let them are? consider all the men of blood, yeah. not just those who murder with bombs and guns. Let so them reflect for a moment on others in our society who what might equally gone? bear the soubriquet. Currency speculators, for example, who murder by telephone, who bring the pound down until a Labour government sees sense and gives cast-iron guarantees that it will carry out their policies, which inevitably include extended wage standstills, vicious cuts in social spending, and a huge increase in the reservoir of the unemployed. Old people will die this winter, thousands of them of hypothermia or something else, as a direct result of these telephone calls. Let us bring the men of blood to justice by all means, but let us be sure who we mean. Let us pass laws to prevent the men of blood who run the multinationals to stop them juggling plant from country to country in search of maximum profits, regardless of the havoc it causes working people's lives. Let us have laws against the capitalists and the employers who have engineered the largest investment strike in our history over the past two years as a means of clubbing a socialist government into accepting capitalist policies. These men kill facelessly with, 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 with pen and ink, telephone, with telex machines, but they are men of blood nonetheless. I beg to move amendment number 84 and I call for it to be put. Did you read what I said? Yeah, well, get the Guardian tomorrow and read it. Oh. Don't worry, Alf. You'll get ulcers. Cheers. What time are we likely to be leaving tomorrow? Four, maybe. Around four. I fixed a meeting with the women's press. That'll be OK. What's going to happen? Will they kick you out? Suspend you? I don't know. You took flack, as they say. I went there to say it. I said it. What was that about Pakistanis on the phone? Oh. There's been half a dozen beatings up down Hillmore. A couple of shop fronts done over. Christ! Has anybody heard? None, seriously, Joe, it says. Who was it? Who do you think? Oh, bastards. What are the police doing? The police are conducting inquiries. It'll get worse.
Hello? Oh, hello. No, 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 no. It's been blown up out of all proportion. When? No, no. Start at the beginning. Uh-huh. A man? When was that? Uh-huh. Go on. Uh-huh. Have you told anyone? All right, but uh, ring the police anyway. They'll probably send someone around to keep watch. Get out my diary. Uh, lock the doors. Keep the kids away from the windows. And then I want you to ring a man called Bill Wilkinson at Lily 581132. 132. Yes. Tell him who you are. What's been happening, he might be able to help in some way. I'll come up now. Oh, three, three and a half hours. No, Mim, I'd rather. Yes. Yes. Take care of you. Bye. Mary. Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry. We've got to go north. What is it? It's probably nothing. Some joker's been making threatening telephone calls. Who has that been threatening? Me, the kids. What with? You name it. The wife phoned. It's a copper there. Wouldn't have a snare. Pop it. The paid a visit, right? Mr. Fassis, no question. I'm Brown, he's a friend. It's all right, Sergeant, it is my husband. You all right? Yes, we're fine. The children are sleeping on the sofa. I'll make some tea. It's all right, ma'am, I'll make it. Um, these are the friends I asked you to call. It's Bill Wilkinson, oh, yes. Miriam, okay. Mr. Patel, mm -hmm. Miriam. How do you do? I'm sorry you're missing your sleep. That's all right. Do you want some tea? No, we'll get off now. We're back. OK. We'll talk tomorrow sometime, eh? Today. Sure, give us a ring. Still out of work. Eh? Well, thanks. No need. Take care. No. Thank you. Thank you. So what happened? I phoned the police. They said they'd come at once. About ten minutes later, I had a car. I pulled the curtain to see if it was them. The car stopped. There were two men in it. One of them threw something at the house, a petrol bomb, the sergeant said. It hit the fence and exploded into flames. The car drove off. 
Well, they found it abandoned by Hillmore Park. They think it was stolen. George Peters and the Bates helped me put out the fire. They'd want to do it, Bill. Yeah. Sergeant with the team. 